Hi, so I'm here with my first video for Hedgehog Hollows using their monthly subscription box. The April theme was more towards masculine and male cards. And for this card, I'm going to use the stencil that you just saw, which is lovely tool kit on it. And I'm going to use this stamp from the main stamp set, which is obviously of the tour theme. I'm going to use it with um, these distress inks. I like to use my distress inks in colours in like sets of three, but it's totally up to you, use as many colours or as few as you like. I also like to cut all my mats and layers to fit my card before I start my piece. And I've used a 6 by 6 inch card, but again it is entirely up to you what size card you use. Oh, look, tell I'm new at this, trying to decide where I need to put that ink. <laughs> so here you can see me just applying the inks with the applicator tool. Okay, I'm not overthinking where I'm putting it at this point, I'm just laying colour down. I know I'm going to absolutely soak this piece of paper with water and move all these inks around later on. So I'm not particularly focused on how well it's blending or anything, I'm just laying that colour down. And there you go, so you can always see it starting to bubble and move and bead up. Um, when you're picking your cardstock for this, it needs to be quite heavy duty because you are putting on a lot of water to get everything to move. And I will just keep spritzing and moving that piece of paper around until I'm happy. So I decided not to make you all watch me drying that because it does take a while. So I've cut that section of the video out. And as you can see, you've got a quite, quite muted effect at the end where the colours have started to blend into each other. Now I'm just going to lay that stencil over the top. Because I've chosen a smaller card, that stencil fits over perfectly. If I'd done a bigger card, I would stencil and do it in areas and then just move the stencil on repeat. And I'm just stenciling over the top of the previous colours. And I'm using the same colours and trying to stick to the same areas with some overlap. really liked how it looked at this point. It's such a clear and precise stencil. I've just taken the stamp that I picked from the set, um, keeping to the same theme of the tours, and I've just mounted that onto one of my, my blocks, and I've used Memento ink just to ink it up. When I've decided where I'm going to place this first stamp, stamped image, I'm making sure that I've got enough space on there that I can stick the sentiment that I want in the centre.
And right here is where I make a mistake in a minute. I decide that I don't like it without the line at the top. So I go back in to stamp. And I get a bit of a shadow effect on that stamp, which I will cover up later. So it's not too much of an issue. Um, yeah, you can see it there that, I, that I've overstamped. I figure we all do this occasionally, so just leave it in there. It can be covered up. Um, off side of the camera, I'm just inking up that sentiment that I want to use. Um, so I'll work better at making sure that this is all in screen for you next time. But I'm just inking up the stamp. I just repeat that in all of my stamped images, just using the memento ink each time. So I get a nice clear impression. And here's um, where I matted and layered a, a piece of craft cardstock and a piece of white, and I've just restamped that sentiment just to cover up where I've overstamped in the top corner. This is a quite a quick card from me. Um, I hope you have enjoyed watching it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I was very pleased with how it turned out and I hope you are. wanted to show you a different way of how to use those stamps so you didn't need it as a main focal image all the time. You can still use it to build up those backgrounds. And now I'm just matting it onto the piece of craft cardstock that I cut down at the beginning. And then I'll mount, mount that onto my white card blank once everything's completely dry. Thank you. Bye.